Good morning. Well, here I am sitting on the promenade of Netanya. It's another of those Jewish holidays, and so Sandra and I have come away for just a couple of days to soak up a bit of sun. I'm afraid I've soaked up a little bit too much and got myself burnt, but uh, Sandra's still on the beach and getting browner and browner by the day. The Priest of Tabernacles, that's the way he knew the Priest of Tabernacles at the moment, when the Jewish people remember God with them in the wilderness, when they lived in these temporary shelters. Also, of course, it might be um, a commemoration of Christians looking forward to the time when Jesus comes back and lives with his people here in the world. Also, another thought, it may be, may be the time of Jesus' birthday. John says that Jesus came and tabernacled amongst us. It may be that he was hinting that this was his natural birthday. We, of course, um, hold a, a, an official birthday for him on December the 25th, one of the darkest times of the year before the new year springs into being. But uh, the chances are he was not born on that day. And here in the middle of, us, of October, and it, there could be more than a better time for it to have happened. See, even the Romans would not be as foolish as to think that people could make a, a journey to Bethlehem over all that distance in the middle of winter. This is probably a far better time of the year for it to have happened. So we just don't know. We just don't know. But as we think about it, we just remember God with us at all times. Just as he was with the Jews through the wilderness, as he traveled with them and kept them safe. We're told that a pillar of fire went before them and a cloud just guided them at all times. It must have been a rather strange experience for them because they come to a point and they suddenly realize that the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire at night had come to a stop. And so Moses would say to the people, right, it seems we must stop here for a while. The priest would immediately start entering, putting up the tabernacle. They would drive these sockets into the ground and then slip the poles into the sockets and then put the, all the different ornaments inside and the roof on top as people gathered around the tabernacle and waited to see what it was that God was going to do next. Following him at all times, wherever he was leading and making sure they were doing exactly what they wanted. So they can imagine them all gathered together and sometimes we are told that the, when the cloud stopped, it will stop for days, sometimes it will stop for weeks, sometimes it will stop for months. But you can almost imagine them setting up the whole tabernacle, setting up all their camp, and then suddenly come, somebody runs into Moses and says, Moses, Moses, quick, the, the, the cloud's moving again, we're off. Everything has to be taken down, packed up in a special order. The people who have to look after the different things were all commissioned to do so. They would pack up the tabernacle and once again they would set off. Set off on this long 40 year journey through the wilderness until they came back to the land of Canaan. We're told in the book of Deuteronomy that it was a very short journey from Egypt to Canaan, but because they had turned it down and because they hadn't been willing to go in, so God had in fact sent them off into the wilderness. It was probably just a good time of training anyway because this has been a slavery in Egypt and they needed a time, a time to stop and think and work out who they were as a people. A time when their rules and regulations given to them to Moses would be part of their lives. Moses gave them these regulations to make them a, a quite a distinct people amongst the people they met. And there were very strict instructions as to what they should do and how they should actually do it even down to the way they wore their clothes, even down to the type of animals they, they could eat, all of these things made them into a distinct people. And as we look at them, we begin to see that we who are Christians after the coming of Jesus, well, a lot of these restrictions have been removed from us. We are now able to sort of get on with our lives and live our lives in the way that we live in them. We can thank God for this because, as Paul says in Christ, there is neither male nor female, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, but there is a new creation. So I sit here now up on this place, and I've just been praying for you all once again, asking for God's blessing upon you. Give me some time to send out some emails to different people I want to contact, and to speak to them in that way as well.
But here now I ask a blessing upon each one, wherever you are, that you will recognize the fact that God is with you, tabernacling amongst you, wherever you may be living. Amen.